Built in 1969, Rynearson Stadium has been the home to the Eagles for a ridiculously long amount of time. Expanding from 15,000 up to 22,000, finally uh, at its current 30,200 fan capacity, Rynearson Stadium is getting a bit too small. In comes Rynearson 2, which will be the home to the Eagles from here on out. Uh, especially after the big move into the Big Ten. More fans needed to be able to fit into the stadium, so the capacity has increased from 30,000 to over 70,000. How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week four, and we have our first home game of the season. We're 2-1 and one already, so hopefully the home field advantage will help us uh, in achieving a 3-1 and one record, as we will play the 0-1 Boise State Broncos. Our final out-of-conference matchup, one that should be winnable. Uh, you know, now a P5 team playing a G5 team. And we're the higher overall uh, team. I didn't expect that. We're expected to win, ranked in the top 25 for the first time this year. Boise State, well, they lost their first game. They're minus four on the turnover differential, which means they had a lot of turnovers last game. And we created... A lot of turnovers in our last game as well. So that looks pretty good for us. Boise State, uh, was it a good loss? Well, they lost to Baylor uh, on the road. Not very close. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a bad loss because they shouldn't have been expected to win, but uh, it's certainly not a good one. We have seven players all ready for visits this week. So uh, we're probably going to be giving those away. And I think... Well, we're going to offer some scholarships first to see. Uh, well, I guess William Wilson we weren't in the lead with, but uh, to see if we can get an insta-commit uh, to Sean Hines. No, that's a shame. Okay, so I think that honestly, with the guys that we're uh, in big leads with, which doesn't seem like a whole lot right now, just Christian Jackson, he might be alone here. Uh, but I think we're going to try to send guys that we're in the lead with early to early games. Uh, and then people who we're in battles with, we'll try to send them to later matchups to maximize the amount of points that we get from visits. So, uh, late in the schedule, it seems like Michigan State would be our best home option. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to be easy. A lot of ranked teams right now scheduled to play, uh, uh at home. But, yeah, I think we're going to start pretty much stacking up this uh, Michigan State game and try to get as many complimentary visits as we can but just to try and lock in Christian Jackson as soon as possible we're actually just gonna send him to this Boise State game try to get him locked in so that we can take more points out in fact we can afford to take 100 away from him this week uh that's not him though so <laughs> the rest of the the players we're gonna try to send to the michigan state game otherwise it looks like it's gonna have to be ohio state or potentially boise state uh or penn state we're gonna go penn state with deshaun hines uh this is gonna be tough it's as simple as that uh it's going to be very competitive in the recruiting this season we're going to get a lot of XP for it, but they're going to be very difficult games to provide those recruiting goals. With our recruiting done, let's take a look at the top 25 polls real quick, just to see what the odds of us uh, moving up further in the polls will be after this week. Uh, assuming that we win, ranked matchups will be big. Number two, Florida, the team that beat us week one pretty bad, will play on the road at number 10, Tennessee. Uh, honestly, we're rooting for the Gators to win out this season so that our loss looks as good as possible. Other than that, we have a number 19 UCF, uh, playing or hosting a number 22 Fresno State. So no matter what, a team in front of us will lose there. Other than that, not a whole lot of ranked matchups. So I guess we'll just be rooting for chaos and hopefully all the teams in front of us can just start to lose. We had a lot of undefeated teams until late in the season last year. I'm really hoping that that isn't the case this year because we want to have as good a chances as possible to sneak into the playoffs and maybe even have space for a second loss. So let's go ahead and get into this one. A 72 overall for Boise State. They are not good at all. They have a 68 offense. They do have a good 78 defense, which is better than ours. But our defense has done pretty well so far this season. Can they do what they did to Minnesota against these guys? We're going to wear the full home uniform for the unveiling of Ryan Nearson 2. And for Boise State, 
Uh, I like the away uniform a little bit, but I want them to have a little bit more in the team color department. So we're going to go with the alternate two. Get more of that blue and a little bit more of that orange in this game. And we'll just be looking to put on an absolute route. Uh, really kick off right near some two with a bang. Coming into this one, our offense looking a little bit better than you would expect. We're scoring a lot of points this season, passing the ball better than we're running it, which is really surprising for me. They have a mediocre offense. Uh, they were playing against Baylor, so I don't know what exactly that means, but their defense isn't looking so hot. They give up a lot of passing yards and also a decent amount of rushing yards as well. So neither one looks great for us. We do have Christian Jackson, the number 10 defensive end in the country coming to visit. So if we can get a bunch of sacks and tackles for loss with the defensive line, that would be good. But I don't know if we can necessarily make that happen. Uh, Frank Blair on a hot streak. That's good. Any injuries? Maurice Tate, we're going to continue to start him so long as he can stay healthy, but... Albert Johnson certainly making a good case for being the starter. Uh, for Boise State, there's a left tackle out for eight more weeks with a partially torn MCL. So, again, we're just getting lucky in the injury department, and that's certainly going to help us out. It's a rainy day here on the unfailing Rynearson Stadium, too. You know, kind of disappointing. I'm sure that the fans would have liked a much better day, especially because we're still really early in the season, but it's that Michigan weather here in Ypsilanti as it looks like we're going to start the ball. Thankfully, it's not too windy, though. Hope that the rain doesn't cause any problems with ball security as this is a very returnable kick for Frank Blair. Can he get some blocks? There's a pancake. And Ron Johnson just can't quite hold this, so a mediocre return after all that promise. And we're going to start trying to run the ball in this game. Don't want to pass too much if we don't have to. Maurice Tate. Oh, gosh. Well, if they're going to do this, we're going to send them deep. Uh, we would be foolish not to try and take advantage of this. Although, uh, I'm having a hard time hot routing, guys. There we go. Let's hope for a home run here. Barely get the play off. Waiting. Pressure coming. And we just can't quite get rid of it. Maurice takes a shot and it's incomplete. Good aggression from Boise State. Wish that we had a, another quarter second to get that pass off. Now we can try to run on second and 10. That looks pretty good. Remember, they do have a 78 overall defense. So uh, it might be a struggle for our offense. But knowing that their offense is going to be worse than ours makes me a little bit more confident. It is third and nine, however. So we'll try to go to the air to convert this. Stepping back. This is a tough throw. Could be picked off, and it is. I thought that I waited long enough to get it past the linebacker, but Robinson goes up and gets it. That's not a good start. That is not a good start. No mercy. We cannot let them score a touchdown on this opening drive for their offense. We're bringing pressure, calling it a run to the right. They cut it up. The blocking was beautiful, and it's a nine-yard pickup from Richard Anderson on the wide receiver jet sweep. And I'm just going to continue to bring this pressure. Can't allow them to do much. They might be running a wildcat here. Uh, another sweep? No, it's a, it's a fake. I think I'm going to get called for an offside, though. Offside. I just, I tried to skirt behind the D-lineman, but I got stuck going in front of him. That's unfortunate. Instead of, uh, third and inches, it's a first down inside the 15 is, again, they'll step back. They were in the Wildcat that last time, because this is the running back with the ball, and he's the one that handed it off. But we do get the stop for a loss of three. That's pretty big. The hope right now is that we can create a turnover of our own, but I'm not going to necessarily expect that. On this second down, they'll step back to throw, and in the corner of the end zone, it's too easy. It's a touchdown to Tom Holloway, 15 yards into the end zone. That's not good news for the defense. Start this game down seven. All right. Well, we've dug ourselves a little bit of a hole, but now it'll make it more fun when we uh, absolutely slaughter them because... We made them think they had a chance. A great return on that one. Out past the 35 for Ron Johnson. And now it'll just be time to get to work. We're going to continue to let Maurice run on this season. Hopefully he doesn't need it. Durham Finch gets blown up in the backfield for a loss of four on the option. This defense is causing problems. We have pretty much only gotten negative yards so far in this game, which is not good. Trying to hand it off. Something's got to give. Durham Finch. Well, he gets us just past the original line of scrimmage. But again, third and nine. So what can we do here? We got to throw. 
They're bringing pressure, getting outside the pocket. A is open. This isn't going to be enough, though. Zach Wilson, I should have scrambled with that. Could have used the tight end as a blocker instead of dumping it off to him. And some bad decision-making from me means we got to punt this one away. A three and out. The ball muffed. Can we get there? No, they pick it up. They're going to get a decent return out of it as well. Just bounced off of his head. We put it far enough out of the way. Not sure if he was important to the team necessarily, but the guy who did end up recovering that fumble got injured on the play. Had to be brought off the field as this does not look like a 68 overall offense. I think I'm just going to be relentless. Pressure on every single play until they make enough mistakes. We have to just overwhelm their offensive line, I think. We know that this quarterback isn't necessarily good. So if we can just slow them down, that would be good. At least we have them in a third down here. So I just missed another tackle. And I am absolutely going to bring the pressure on this one. They're going to step back to pass, though. And there's the sack. The pressure works. It's fourth and six. Could be in four down territory, but that counts as a three and out in my eyes. And it is the pump formation coming out. We're in the safe zone, though, because teams seem to like to fake their punts against us. So what can we do on this one? It is a fake. They're going to try to run it, and they're going to get it. Oh, my gosh. The scenes when you know what's coming, and you still can't stop it. It was the defense able to hold, but the special teams unable to finish the job. So now, another first down. They're going to continue to run, and there's a stop just to gain a two. Expecting a pass on this second knee. I don't like the two tight ends. Bring wide receiver in motion. Kind of burning the clock a little bit here. They're going to step back. Quarterback scrambling. Whitfield gets the tackle. They call it a sack as well. So that could be huge for the recruiting goals, but it's third and eight. And I'm curious to see what can we do to stop these guys. I'm user and Carter. We're going to see if we can cause absolute chaos in the backfield. And there it is. The sack. All too easy. We blow up the play. Back-to-back -back sacks for the D-line. And it's fourth and 15. No way they go for it here. But just because I don't trust these guys, we're in the safe zone. <laughs> this is a, a really awkward spot to punt. I would have just gone for it here, even though it is 15. That one's going to bounce into the end zone, and we'll take our touchback. Still down seven as we near the end of this first quarter. And we've got to figure something out here. On the offensive side of things, they're bringing pressure. Maurice picks up just enough of a block, gets outside the pocket. Right bumper was open. But I pressed the button too late, and we already crossed the line. The running back, I think that might have been Stan Williams, would have had 50 yards easily. Instead, it's a three-yard scramble, and Maurice took an absolute shot. And we're going to try the triple option. I don't necessarily feel confident with this one, but we'll try it anyways. Maurice gets the pitch out. Durham Finch breaks the tackle. He's going to lose three yards, though. Forward progress was eliminated, and it's third and ten. I'm just going to let this one go into the second quarter. The rain, I think, is getting to our heads. We're not playing very well. Still down a touchdown. It could be worse, but, man, that pick sucked. Uh, We just got to figure it out, starting with this third down, and we can still be okay. One thing is certain. I'm not feeling very confident on this third down attempt. We're going to put Finch on the wheel route just in case we need to scramble, but stepping back to throw. Yep, I'm outside the pocket. B is wide open. No, he's not as wide open as I thought. Wilson comes down with it through the contact. John, a huge 42-yard catch. Durham Finch on that wheel route was actually wide open, but Maurice throws a dot and keeps the drive alive, and now we're going to threaten to score. the. Oh, the read option was looking good as Maurice gets seven. And I'm just waiting for him to get injured at this point. Uh, if he gets injured in this game, we're starting uh, Albert for the rest of the season. Maurice Tate. That was weird. He was like still in pitch mode. I thought we were going to get a better cut there, but instead he takes another shot. Had I known that the agility wasn't quite going to be there, I think I would have slid down. But I guess we'll have to live with that. Let's just go design a handoff. Give it to Stan Williams. Cut it back inside. Take our positive yards and... Just march ever closer to the end zone here. And we'll step back again to throw. Second seven. Waiting, waiting, waiting. This is a scary throw. Oh, my gosh. That was so inaccurate. Second pick of the game for Maurice Tate. 
The good news is that Boise State has bad field position, but man, that was an inaccurate throw from the freshman quarterback. And I hate to do this, but we're benching him for the rest of the game. Uh, he's a better athlete. Theoretically, he's a better passer, but Albert has the composure. He's just a redshirt sophomore, but Albert has just played so much better this season. So it'll be uh, a change on offense, and hopefully it's enough. Trying to bring some pressure here. It's an option out towards the edge. We had to get to the quarterback there, and he's still breaking tackles out. 22 yards. Come on. Defense, you got to be kidding me. How are we going to bounce off of a quarterback in a situation like that? First and 10, he's going to run the option again. This time, the pitch gets out, and it's a good tackle for loss on that one. We needed that last play, though. I'm getting back to Carter. I need a sack on this play. So we'll see if we can do it. Never mind a wide receiver in motion. We know it's going to be a run. I'm just going to blow him up there. Little wildcat formation, third and 16, and it works out. We probably shouldn't be surprised that uh, Boise State's been running the wildcat. Getting a little tricky with it. Fake punts and all that, but it's still annoying. Logan, that's a good tackle. Fourth and 16. I'm taking a timeout there. With 3.42 on the clock, we're going to need as much time as possible because you never know what's going to happen on this drive, and we have to have enough time to run our offense and get into the end zone. A chance for a good return. Frank Blair just didn't quite have the acceleration of the blocking to make the most of that one. So a change of pace here. Albert Johnson has won the starting spot back until further notice, and he will be hoping to get this offense on the board before halftime. Counter for Durham Finch goes for four yards on that first down. And, I mean, the goal is just to run as much as possible still. The passing game hasn't worked very well. But if the running can do this, that's just fine. Durham Finch gets 10 yards. I think the longest run of the day so far. And it's time to see if Albert is going to be uh, decent at throwing the football today. First and 10, stepping back. They're bringing pressure. The whip route to Wilson's open, and John has nine yards. We're completing passes. Just those two interceptions, pretty brutal. Second and one, stepping back, looking for Wilson again. That's going to be picked off, isn't it? Gosh! Dang it, that is, oh my God, they're obliterating me. How can I not, I'm losing my mind. Just getting outplayed in every aspect right now. They know exactly what I'm gonna run and they make it hurt. How about on this one? First and 10, no wildcat, 235 left in the half. They're gonna try, oh my gosh, look at all that space. That's a huge tackle to save that from being way more than two yards. We should be expecting uh, a lot of passing, but we'll see if we actually get it. Quarterback scrambling. He's going to take another sack, so it's third and 12. And we'll take a risk here, and we're going to rush five. Just need to keep bringing pressure. We got the pressure in there. They released it early. Found Tom Holloway over the middle, but it's enough for the stop. Kind of wish that we had our other timeout available from the last time we made them punt it away, but... We're going to save it. We'll let them run down the clock and keep ourselves with two timeouts as this should be another returnable punt. We'll see if we can actually get some blocking for Frank Blair as... No, just not quick enough today. It's only a nine-yard return. So it's a minute nine on the clock with an offense that needs to pass and an offense that's thrown three interceptions in the first half. But that's not going to scare us. We're stepping back and we're just releasing balls downfield. John Wilson... Can't come down with that one. That one also could have been picked off. Our third string quarterback, I can't even remember his name, but I know he's not good. I might give him a chance. Uh, sure, I'm not doing our quarterbacks any help or any favors by throwing these passes, but they're not helping themselves either. Almost instantly here. It's third and 10. Still inside the 35. That is atrocious. Looks like they're going to bring pressure. And this is a scary throw. Curtis came down with it. Broke the tackle. Still on his feet. Curtis. Oh, my gosh. Brian Curtis was huge for us last game. He might prove to be huge for us this game as well. That puts us across midfield. We desperately needed that one. As we will again step back to throw. They're bringing the pressure outside the pocket. This is a tough throw. Brian Curtis put it downfield just far enough into his hands. 30 yards and the drive keeps moving. 
most importantly on these is we're able to stop the clock as we will look for the mid screen to John Wilson. They are going to bring some pressure. This could be big. I threw that just a little bit. Wait. So it's just a three yard gain and the clock will move. Gotta make the most of this one. I'm looking back at Brian Curtis. Snapping it early over the middle. Incomplete. A terrible throw from Albert. But thankfully no Broncos players were in the area to pick it off. Gives us a third and seven. 13 yards from the goal line with two timeouts in 24 seconds. But first this third down matters. I'm just going to go with the check down. Give it to Wilson. It's not enough. I got to take the timeout. It's fourth and one. The way that we've been playing, and honestly, the way the defense has been playing, I need a touchdown here. So we're giving it to Courtney Smith. Fullback dive. And then hopefully we just do it again. Ooh, first and goal. Let's get in the hurry up. You might think fullback dive here, but I'm letting Albert try to dive it in. And in fact, we can only run so many plays. I'm letting the clock burn down a couple seconds. Albert over the line into the end zone. <laughs> he kind of got popped, but made it all the way through and held onto the ball. We're going to tie it up with 11 seconds in the half. The question now is, is Boise State going to take a shot at the end zone? A uh, little Hail Mary or something. We know it's Boise State. Oh, my gosh. London just obliterated that man. I don't know how Butler's standing back up after that hit. Well, it's the CPU playbook here. They're going to hand it off on first down. And, okay, yep, they're going to be taking the timeout and going for it all. I know exactly how they work here. So we're going to send in the prevent D. You never know, a chance at a pick six here. As just make sure everybody's back and we're going to see. Can we just hit the quarterback? He's got plenty of time. Heaves it. Guys down there. Not picked off. Oh my gosh. That could have been six. That could have been six. Clock. Triple zeros as we head back into the locker room. A disappointing half. I know that we're tied up and that we essentially gave them their points. But three interceptions, the offense has been atrocious. We had to bench our starting quarterback and the backup. Albert's not doing too great. The defense has been good enough. Like, they gave up a touchdown, but it wasn't really their fault. It was a short field for them to work with. Other than that, they've done a pretty spectacular job. It's just, if the offense can't figure it out, we are in trouble of losing this game still. So it's on them to make sure that we can put these guys away in the second half. This might be controversial. I'm trying to stun it. Boise State always gets a little tricky. So are we. Oh, that one. I liked the bounce. It wasn't too far. It was going to be a little bit short of 10 yards, but you never know when they're going to have butterfingers. Unfortunately for us, it doesn't work out. But I trust the defense here. And you, might, you guys are all going to disagree with that. But I think it was worth taking the shot. They're going to try to hand this one off out towards the edge. We bring the pressure. We'll drop them for a loss of a yard. That starts out this set of downs for the defense nicely. Definitely be expecting the pass on this one. But we'll see what we can do. Trying to bring a little bit of a blitz here. Second 11. They snap it. It's a screen out towards the edge. London makes another good tackle. He's doing a great job for us at that linebacker's spot. It's third and four. And I'm getting really aggressive here. We're bringing the house. Seeing if we can do something. Quarterback hit as he's throwing. It's fourth and four. And this is a long kick. But they are out here in the field goal formation. So we have sent Frank Blair deep to try and return it. We're looking for the kick six. It's definitely off. Not quite returnable though. And look at that. We don't pay the price for kicking it onside to start the half. And we get decent field position. Now the question is going to be what does the offense have to work with? Nobody feeling themselves early in this second half. Throwing it to Fontenot. Oh my gosh. Did he really get a hand on that? If he... Oh... So close to a touchdown. It is actually very surprising how good this Boise State defense can be at times. Certainly causing some problems. So is this Albert Johnson scrambling for the first down. I guess it's not a scramble, but keeping it on the read option. That's a 13-yard carry. Not something that defenses expect to see from him, but we keep pulling it off without too many problems. This one's going to be big. The late pitch out to Durham Finch Jr., He's got us across the 30-yard line. The blocking from the wide receiver. That might have been John Wilson out there on the right side. Absolutely made that one possible. We're going to try the play action. X is going to be wide open. Wilson, pay him back for the beautiful blocking in his first and goal. 
Uh, <laughs> well, there's a problem with the stadium. I don't know if you guys see that, but uh, it's getting a little wonky. Uh, okay. I guess that's a feature. Uh, Stan Williams into the end zone. Scores the touchdown, and we take a 14-7 lead. That is how we needed to start off this second half. We finally get our first lead of the game. And the cool uh, behind the end zone video board. I guess that's what we'll call it. Something just to distract the opponents. London almost got in there and made a big hit. But again, decent job from the special teams. Four sacks already in the game for the defense. I would like some more play action. Quarterback all the time, but he throws it away. Maybe felt some pressure, but I didn't quite see it. So that'll be a stop for the defense. Second and 10. Try a little bit of cover three. This is a little bit late to do it. We're going to adjust. Shift into the cover two while they bring a man in motion, and we'll see what we can do. Expecting the run. It's going to be a counter. Good job from Clinton Whitfield. I think that was to slow Travis Rich down. It's going to give us a third and five. And again, bringing pressure on the play. Seeing what we can do. Six-man rush. Quarterback. No time to do anything. It's another sack. A loss of eight. And it's fourth and 13. Finally, we're able to start exposing the 68 overall offense. And now a chance to extend the lead up to two scores. As again, it will be returnable. We're going to get good field position on this. The blocking is phenomenal. Frank Blair towards the corner. He has the sideline and we'll be starting it across the 30 down to the 27. Who says no to a first down shot at the end zone? Probably everybody should, but Lane in the back of the end zone. What's this getting real weird back there? Psychedelics behind the end zone. Not quite able to be brought in by Brandon Lane. He had a chance, but he dropped it. Now on the triple option, we'll get the pitch out. Stan Williams. Oh my gosh, didn't get the blocking that we needed. So it's third and seven. Uh, we're just going to try a play action. See what we can do out of this one. They are bringing some pressure. We couldn't get rid of it in time. Thankfully, no sack. Albert got absolutely obliterated, but it's fourth down. And maybe you think we should kick the field goal, which normally I would agree with, but we're going to go for it. Fourth and seven, seeing what we can do. Albert outside the pocket. X is wide open. It's a terrible throw again. Our quarterbacks have done nothing to help us. And it's going to be a pick six unless Stan Williams can run him down. The, uh, the tackling is atrocious. Losing the turnover battle four to zero. Half of the interceptions are just the quarterbacks throwing it inaccurately which is so brutal. Well, I'll take an I told you so from you guys. Should have kicked the field goal. Should have taken the points and gone up two scores, but got a little bit greedy. We can blow this one up though. Beautiful uh, jump on the snap from Royal. That'll drop him for a loss of four. Still in with a shot of uh, keeping these guys outside of field goal range once again. I'm going to again try to jump the snap, kind of expecting a counter on the play. Second and 14. There's the run up the middle. Nobody there. Finally get the tackle, but he picks up nine. It's third and five. And I would love to know if our defense is even capable of creating a, creating a turnover of their own. Quarterback throws it up. Royal. He drops the pick. Devin. Oh, we needed that from you, buddy. He had two chances. Instead, fourth and five. And Boise State's going to get a field goal. Although a false start. That could help us out a little bit. The only thing that makes me feel confident about this at all is that we already know that their kicker missed. Not just short, but wide. Although this one just canned it down the middle. 14-10, it's a four-point lead late in the third. This is what I would call an ugly game for us. I'm going to blame the rain. Uh, certainly not my fault. Although we shouldn't be passing the ball this much if the rain is causing that many problems. How about Frank Blair, though? He's got something to say about it. That's a great return. Breaking tackles almost to the 40. Another good play from our special teams. I can't wait to see how I manage to squander the field position. As we will run this one, Stan Williams getting some nice blocking. Getting some beautiful blocking. And Stan Williams is going to score. First play of the drive. And we will extend our lead up to 11. 41 yards on the touchdown run for Stan Williams. And he continued to get it done late in the game for us all right jones put it deep 
Don't let them return it. Nope, they're going to get a chance. So maybe we can do something here with Graham trying to avoid them. We'll take that. Kept him at the 20. Not a good return from Marcus Singletary. Honestly, I think that besides our interceptions, the biggest difference between this week and last week is that their quarterback is holding on to the ball when we drill him in the backfield. The Minnesota quarterback would have fumbled the ball about three or four times by now, but it's unfortunately just not the case uh, in this game. We do have them in the third down. We have a chance to get off the field here. And I'm going to bring everything. Absolutely everything. See what we can do. Oh, no. Too much. Ron Johnson. We had him pressed up. He gets beat. It was a good job from the freshman to get back into position and have a chance to close things out. This one a run. Not going to go for a whole lot. <laughs> they got lucky. It was only a loss of two. All right. What do we do on this one? Second and 12. Expecting the pass, but when I expect the pass, usually they run. This one covered, honestly, pretty dang well. Quarterback all the time. He's going to scramble. Oh, my gosh. I got aggressive. I tried to hit stick him again. I, it's a problem I have. I'm addicted to it. We played that perfectly, but me and the hit stick are married. I can't get away from it. And it causes us another problem. Thankfully, Boise State's going to bail us out a little bit with a false start. But I just have a problem where when I see a quarterback that I can tee off on, I start to see red and I just go gung-ho at him. And most of the time it doesn't work out. That's pretty nice though, as oh, they're going to try to get a second play off here. Clock winding down, unable to do so. So we're going to go into the fourth quarter with an 11 point lead. I don't know. I mean, we should win this game, barring me throwing more interceptions. But it should be a bigger blowout than what we've done so far. 21 to 10. We just got to finish it. All righty. Defense. Couple more stops here. This run. Good stop. Dropped him for a loss. Third and 17. We're at the point of the game now. Where certainly these guys are going to go for it on fourth down. So we'll see what we can do about that. Trying to get some decent coverage. Uh-oh. That's me getting burned. And they gave him a good spot, too. First down. I was expecting uh, Holloway to sit there when he kind of went out towards the sideline for another half second. It's not what he did. As Blair gets burned on that one, it's another good spot. They got 11 yards, supposedly. We have our aggressive coverage on, too, and we're still getting torched by crow routes, which is a bummer. This one's going to be a run. London kind of got inside, but it's Carter making the tackle for loss on the play. And for me, at this point, we're just kind of trying to slow him down. If we give up a touchdown, it's not the end of the world, but we don't want more than that. A mid-screen, only getting a yard, just happened to be in the right place at the right time to stop the play. It's going to be third and 11, and a chance for us to get off the field, trying to back our guys up. This one, quarterback, he's got nowhere to go. It's a sack for a loss of 12. That might have pushed him out of field goal range. In a game where... Every point matters. Not being able to get this field goal could be incredibly detrimental. We'll see what we can do. Looking to return the field goal again. Ooh, just barely missed that one. It was on target, but a little bit short. And I got to be honest, I want absolutely nothing to do with the Broncos in the rest of this game. It's felt cursed the entire time. So we're just pretty much going to hand it off. Uh, I'm not going to say we won't pass, but it's time to burn the clock on this game. Really put the time against the Broncos here. As we just have to not make any mistakes. Good blocking. Stan Williams almost got another one. A juke there. Would have been a touchdown, but we'll take it. We can burn more clock by not scoring. <laughs> Our wide receiver blocking out on the edges. Has been phenomenal so far today. As we'll just keep running it. This time up the middle with Jerome Simmons. He gets three yards on that carry. And this is going to be hopefully the quickest fourth quarter in history. But with a quick little change of direction on the run. And Stan Williams makes the most of it. Another first down as we're at two and a half minutes left. This is going well. This is going real well. Honestly, I'm very, very tempted to uh, throw. But why, why should we? Timeout's being taken by Boise State. And in my opinion, this is the perfect time to attempt to pass. I'm looking for Zach Wilson. A tough throw. 
Albert just missed him again. He was wide open. Albert has been disappointing throwing the ball. Honestly, both quarterbacks have been disappointing throwing the ball all game long. This one, we're going to hand it off to Jerome. I was hoping to run the triple option. Maybe Jerome can keep doing something. Jerome Simmons breaks free. He's inside the tent, breaks another tackle, and he scores. I cannot believe it. Michael Dyer was down, but Jerome Simmons was not. <laughs> On third and ten, the strong running from the third string back. He's into the end zone, and it's 28 to 10 inside two minutes in the game. It might be true that going down there and continuing to burn the clock would have been the smart play, but I can't pass that up. That's a that's a YouTube short right there. <laughs> First and ten for Boise. Can we make it miserable for him? Expecting a lot of passes. We're going to try to bring some pressure off the back foot. Quarterback throws it, and it's completed. Are you kidding me? David Mitchell with the awareness. Kudos to the wide receiver to be aware of what's happening there and able to get up and get that ball. As, well, this is looking a little bit scary. Justin Johnson gets it 16 yards downfield. It's going to be first and 10, and I'm going to risk it by bringing some pressure. We're bringing the blitz. They almost got me to jump offside. What can we do? Miller can't get there. Another good completion. Corner routes, out routes are killing us right now. See what we can do here. Try and protect everything. Cover six. User Carter. This one picked off by Miller. All too easy. He read that one the whole way. He's got a block. He's got another block. And a decent little return. So finally, we are able to hold on and get a turnover. Dallas Miller is having a great start to the season. If he misses that, it's six for Boise State. But instead, it's Eastern Michigan ball with a minute and 23 left in the game. Boise State had their chances. But our defense against their offense was just a little bit better of a combination than their defense against our offense. And that's going to be all she wrote. Boise State not even taking their timeouts. But for Paul's sake, I'm not against continuing to run. Jerome Simmons is going to get this one. And if he can do something with it, then I'm going to let him. A decent chance out towards the edge. Has a first down. Might have gone out of bounds, which would be a bit of a shame. But no, the clock continuing to move. Inside 20 seconds left. This is going to be the final play of the game. A handoff to Robinson. Some strong running there. Pat, five yards up the middle, and that's going to be it. So we can let this clock wind down. It started real scary. Four interceptions in a game is not a good look, but we were able to persevere. Our defense wasn't able to create many turnovers of their own, but they absolutely obliterated Boise State in the backfield. Plenty of sacks, plenty of tackles for loss, and Stan Williams, player of the game. Seven carries, was that 80 yards and two touchdowns? That's not bad. I'll take it. It's a good win in right Nearson too. Although, who knows if this stadium stays because that glitchy back of the end zone is a little bit weird. We gave up an early touchdown. We gave up a field goal. But once we managed to get the offense kind of running, things were looking real good. And I hate to say it, but Maurice Tate is going to be riding the pine for the foreseeable future until Albert Johnson gets on. Well, uh, I don't know. Out of favor with us? It's going to take a lot, though. Albert's got a lot of leeway with what he's done with this program so far. What a fantastic game. And around the country, Iowa State joins the list of teams to lose to an FCS team. FCS Southeast takes them down 21-14. to Meanwhile, for us, 28-10. to A good second half is enough to win the game for us. Uh, we held them to 55 rushing yards and 140 passing. So really, their only points came off of our stupid turnovers. You know, we lost the turnover battle 4-1. to one. Would have been 4-0 if Dallas Miller didn't make an incredible uh, interception late in the game. Ran for 217, passed for 144, and sat one quarterback on the bench. Player of the game, Stan Williams on offense. Uh, makes sense. And on defense, it's Troy Carter. Five tackles for loss and two sacks for the left end. We advance to 3-1, and one. and before we advance to the next week, uh, let's just make it official. Going to the depth chart, Maurice Tate is going to be replaced by Albert Johnson for the time being. 
Uh, there might be certain situations where Maurice makes more sense. If we play against a team that we can't throw against no matter what, it would probably be better to put uh, Maurice in. I don't know why he's listed as an All-American, but maybe that was a preseason thing. But until Albert proves that he's not able to continue to win games for us, he's going to have the starting job. All right. Well, we'll advance towards week five. We play on the road at Iowa. So our second conference game, our second conference road game as well, and it certainly isn't going to be an easy one. Our offensive coordinator, John Arnold, has leveled up, so that's nice. And look at that, Christian Jackson, the 78 overall left end, has committed to the team, so that's going to free up recruiting points, but also just give us a huge piece of uh, talent to work with for next season. As we move up to 21st in the polls, Iowa, this is going to be a tough game. They are only a B- minus overall, so not great, but they're 2-1. and one. They're favored to win. They're at home. Uh, who do they play? They beat their FCS team, which seems rare this season. They beat Penn State, who is decent, uh, but lost to Iowa State. And a pretty bad one, 31-55. to 55. So surely it's not going to be an easy game, but I don't know if any of our games this season will necessarily be considered going into them. Unfortunately, that is going to have to be it for this episode. I am curious down in the comments what you guys think. Is it the right move benching Maurice in favor of Albert? Or should we just continue to allow the freshmen to get playing experience? Also, I'm curious to know you guys' predictions for this next game at Iowa because this is one where I'm not feeling too confident. After you've commented, please like the video if you enjoyed it. It helps tremendously in getting it seen by more people. And then also subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos get posted. Once you've done the long list of chores, <laughs> you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goodmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.